In this video, I'm going to be going over an approach to solve any circuit. Now what this is, is a more generalized and fundamental version of nodal analysis, but because it's more fundamental, it lacks the exceptions that nodal analysis has within its method. So how it works, there's three steps. You begin with labeling your component currents and your node voltages. You move on to writing KCL and then the equations for your components. And at that point, you have a solvable system of equations that you can then put into a calculator or you can solve by hand. So let's begin with labeling our component currents. Now, some of the components within our circuit are current sources, and those already have labeled currents that we don't have to worry about. And some of the other ones have been labeled for us within the problem statement. So we don't have to label every component in this case, but we do have to label three of them. So we're going to begin with our 40 ohm resistor. So let's go ahead and call this I1, and we'll give it a direction pointing down. You could make it pointing up, and that's totally fine. So the direction that you choose for your currents here is completely up to you. So let's go ahead and make one over here, call this I2. And we'll make this one over here, I3. Okay. So at this point, every component within our circuit has a labeled current. So we can move on to writing our node voltages. So with node voltages, you always have to select which node is going to be your ground node. And that's going to be a reference that everything is measured with respect to. So the ground node is typically placed at the bottom, but you can place this anywhere you like within your circuit. So let's going to go ahead and put this here. So this entire area, this continuous line going up to the components is all our ground node. Because a node is any continuous piece of wire within your circuit. So let's go ahead and continue. We'll call this node V1. We'll call this node V2, and we'll call this node V3. Now, every wire within my circuit now has a voltage label. So we're done with step one. We've labeled our circuit correctly, and that's all we have to do there. So the next step is to write KCL. Now, to do this, we have to identify nodes and look at what currents are coming into the node and what currents are coming out of the node. So let's go ahead and start with node V1. So this is node V1, this whole thing over here, this whole continuous piece. And we're gonna do KCL, and we'll say at V1. What I'm gonna write here is the currents that are pointing towards it are equal to the currents that are pointing away from it. So if we look at that, um, we have 19 amps pointing towards it, so we're gonna say 19. We have IA over here pointing towards it, so we'll say 19 plus IA is equal to the currents that are pointing away from it. So it's going to be I1 and I3. So it's going to be equal to I1 plus I3. And now we're done with KCL V1. So we can move on to V2. So let's go ahead and circle our V2 node here. So this is our V2. So at V2, we have 2IA pointing towards that node. So we're going to say 2IA is equal to IA and I2, which are pointing away from the node. So we'll say IA plus I2. So let's move on to the next node. So this is all V3. And let's go ahead and write our KCL for V3. So in this case, we have I2 and I3 pointing towards V3. So we'll say I2 plus I3 is equal to IB, which is pointing away from it. And that is it for KCL. Now, we did not write a KCL equation for a ground node. This is because it would actually be a redundant equation. and doesn't help you solve the system at the very end. So generally, you can admit writing a the KCL equation for your ground node. So moving on to the equations for our components. So let's begin those. So equations for components are just the equations that describe how each of these works within your circuit. So for instance, our resistors have an equation that is Ohm's law. So we'll begin with our 40 ohm resistor over here. And the equation for that component is going to be that I1 is equal to the potential across it, which is going to be V1 minus 0, our ground node, divided by the resistance of 40. 
Now, something very important to uh, point out here, the direction that you subtract is incredibly important. You always want to subtract in the same direction as the current. So I1 is pointing from V1 to ground. You need to subtract from V1 to ground. So let's move on to the 5 ohm resistor. So we have IA is equal to V2 minus V1 divided by the resistance of 5. That's it. So let's move on to the 10 ohm resistor. We have I2 is equal to V2 minus V3 divided by the resistance of 10 ohms. And that's it for our resistors. So now let's move on to our voltage sources. And we'll begin with 4IB, our dependent voltage source over here. So for any voltage source, dependent or independent, the equation is always going to be the potential across it is equal to the positive side minus the negative side. So we're going to write that 4IB, potential across it, is equal to the positive side, which is node V3, minus the negative side, which is node V1. All right, so let's go to our independent source, the 240 volt source that we have over here. So what we're going to write is the potential across it again, 240 is equal to the positive side, ground node, minus the negative side, V3. And that takes care of our voltage sources. Now our current sources, we've already included the information about them within our KCL. We don't know anything about the voltage, only the current that's passing through them. So because of that, we can't say anything more than what's described within our KCL. So at this point, we now have a solvable system of equations where we know that we have the same number of equations as we do variables, and we can now put this into a calculator and know all the voltage and current values within our circuit. Now you can put this into Symbol Lab or another calculator similar to that, anything that solves systems of equations. My preference is to use a software called Maxima, and I'm going to show you how I would solve this system of equations using that calculator next. So the first thing you're going to want to do in Maxima is go to the Equations tab, and you'll want to click Solve Algebraic System. The first thing it's going to say is, how many equations do you have? In this case, we have eight. We'll tell it we have eight equations, and we can begin typing them in from here. Now, a couple quick things about how you type in your equations to Maxima that are important. The first thing is that multiplication has to be an asterisk sign. You can't put two things next to each other. You can't use parentheses to multiply. There must be an asterisk sign. It's also case sensitive, and there has to be the same number of equations as variables in order to run. Parentheses are also very important. So if you're doing division and subtracting two things like two node voltages, and you want to divide by the resistance in the Ohm's law equation, be sure to use a parenthesis. If you don't use parentheses, it won't do that properly. So I've gone ahead and typed in the equations that we found for a circuit. So this is everything I've typed in, and I have my variables as comma separated, and I can go ahead and hit enter here. So at this point, we have all of our voltages and all of our currents based on the equations that we wrote for our circuit. And this is going to work for any circuit you encounter. And that is it for this video, and I will see you in the next one.